in here. Great. Well, hello. Uh, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the Believer uh, Friday Night Comics Workshop. Uh, my name is Steve Tier, and I'm an illustrator and teacher uh, based in West Philadelphia. Um, I've done comics uh, for the Nib and for um, some other websites around. Uh, I do have a comic coming out in the Believer um, next month, which I'm very excited about. And that has a little to do with uh, teaching. A lot of my comics are about um, politics and history. Most of them are actually about uh, schools and teaching. Um, and I've done some illustrations for uh, some newspapers um, and a few websites. Uh, mostly what I do though is uh, pet portraits. Um, so that's kind of my main uh, illustration gig is drawing uh, funny pictures of people's dogs and cats and other pets. Uh, and I'm not complaining about that. I love doing it. Um, so today uh, I am going to talk to you about drawing stories um, about uh, homes or houses or buildings. Uh, but I want everyone to think about what kind of stories we uh, what kind of stories come into our mind when we're in a, a building or when we're in a place? Um, and it could be the place that you live in. It could be a, a structure or a building that you see every day. Um, and we're gonna try to use our imagination and also information that we know about these places in order to make a comic. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I, how I first kind of got this idea and, uh, and then I'll give you a few tips um, on how we, can, how we can construct this comic. Um, so uh, there, is a, there are a few, um, well, there used to be a couple different Philadelphia uh, alt weeklies. There's just one currently. Um, and a few years ago, I, I, did, um, <clears throat> I did a series of comics um, about buildings throughout Philadelphia and about kind of the history about them. And they're all just like true stories about the buildings. So I'll show you what that looks like uh, right now. And, uh, and I'll show you how that's gonna be different from what we're gonna be doing today. Um, so this is, so here you go. Um, and all of the comics that I did for this Alt Weekly, I did about uh, maybe four or five of these. And they all uh, are in this structure where, um, and it's called structure story, but the, the layout was all the same. I had the um, building in the middle there and then surrounding it would be uh, early facts about uh, the, the architecture um, and things that happened inside and, and sort of what, what's going on with the, um, with the structure these days. And so this was uh, a really famous boxing venue in Philadelphia for a long time. And I think it's currently being uh, made into a, a very uh, expensive, um, something called a micro hotel, uh, which I'm not, I'm not sure what that means. I guess it's, it's a smaller hotel. Um, so that's kind of how I got the idea about this, but I was thinking that uh, it might be fun to, to um, tell a story about maybe where you live or, or like I say, maybe a building that you see often and tell some true stories about it, but maybe also make up some stories, uh, maybe make some myths or tell a lie about um, uh, the building or the, or the home or the house. Um, so I'll give you a quick example of something I've been working on and I'm also going to draw with you today and I'm gonna try to finish this, um, this one page comic that I've been working on. And uh, I've been working on it all day, so don't feel like yours has to be um, uh, very detailed or, or complicated. We're gonna try to figure out um, a fun and, and quick way of making a, a four panel comic today. So I'm gonna switch my camera real quick. Okay. So this is what I was working on today. And this is actually, um, this is kind of like a an outline of the of the house I live in. It's a it's just an apartment building. Well, it's a uh, it's a house divided into three units in uh, Philadelphia, and there's some true stories here, and there are some some lies and some myths, and some fake things that I made up. 
And then down here, I have uh, four things that I've got penciled and I'm gonna be working on these today uh, with you while you're drawing. Um, so I'll kind of explain this and it might help you get some ideas about how you'd like to do your, your comic that is based off of maybe where you live or, or like I say, a building that you, uh, that you see and that you're interested in. So you can do a very rough outline um, of the structure and it doesn't have to be realistic and it doesn't have to be super fancy. And then you can divide it to four panels. So if you were to just start over, you might kind of imagine what the general outline of the house sort of looks like. Maybe you can include a chimney. Maybe you have some satellite dishes on there. Uh, maybe you have a couple satellite dishes, uh, maybe a satellite dish from a previous owner. Um, and uh, after you have the general outline of the house, in the middle, you can decide how you'd like your boxes or your panels. And they can be any kind of shape. And then inside these panels, that's where we're going to tell some stories. And I guess they might be one scene. You might tell one story that uses four panels. Or you might do what I did, which is I, I kind of told uh, sort of like individual stories within each box, a so sort of like one panel cartoon in each of these panels. So this kind of gives you uh, uh, some kind of hidden information about um, the, the house where I live in. It's, it's three different units. and my wife and my dog and I all live um, just on this top floor here. And this kind of tells the story of when I first entered this house. Um, I was actually moving my wife in, who, she was my girlfriend at the time, and uh, she was moving in with uh, a friend of hers. And this is the first time I saw the house, but her friend had never seen the house. So I was uh, sort of uh, FaceTiming her and I was carrying my phone around from room to room and showing her uh, just what the different like rooms and what the bathroom looked like and, and that kind of thing. Um, we, as we settled in, after I moved into the house and we sort of settled in, we started to get to know mice really well. There were lots of uh, mice that were joining us um, often or they would kind of have parties and stuff when we were uh, trying to sleep. And so I like to imagine that there's kind of like a, uh, maybe a king uh, mouse or, or maybe kind of a, I don't know, maybe kind of a mouse god that lives in the, in the attic, uh, sends all the mice our way. Um, and uh, this, is, this is kind of an exaggeration. So maybe you can take a story that has happened in, in, where you, in the home where you live or maybe the building and you can kind of exaggerate it. Uh, one time my wife and I were trying to sleep and some really uh, loud um, kind of uh, disco music or, or, or some kind of house music, uh, literally house music was coming from the, the floor right below us. And we were struggling to get in touch with the person that was, that was there uh, to get them to, to stop the music at three, three o'clock in the morning. And so I just imagine that there's a dance club uh, uh, below where we actually live. And then I'm going to skip this just for a second and show you uh, the basement. And this is where, um, if you really want to stretch your imagination, kind of like think about maybe there are there are kind of creatures or there's goblins or something that live in your house, and and maybe they're kind of working on uh, how how you the dreams you're going to have, or they're they're there to um, uh, you know make kind of strange things happen in your in your house. So this might be this might be the myth or the lie that you're going to tell um, about the house or the structure that you're that you're working on. And finally, I'll just I'll just show you what I'm going to work on today. This is another uh, example of, of what you might do with the house. We live with our dog Pickles and Pickles likes to look outside at the other dogs and uh, be passing cars and stuff like that. 
And he had a, a, another friend, a dog friend named Katie. She kind of liked to do the same thing. And now I'm going to tell uh, two fake stories. And this is using things that I see around the house and the things that I smell around the house. So I see a lot of surfboards that are in the uh, back shed. And so I kind of wonder who was the character that left all those surfboards uh, piled up back there. I've never met that, that surfer character, but I decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw that, that surfer character in this comic. And when we first moved into the house, we were always smelling broccoli, uh, cooked broccoli and steamed broccoli um, in the uh, uh, stairwell. So I'm just imagining that there's this person who's cooking giant uh, stalks of broccoli uh, all the time. And, and so that's what I'm gonna work on. Uh, and I'm gonna draw that with you. But I probably said a lot of information really quickly. And so I apologize about that. But um, I figured that we can maybe uh, spend a few minutes um, making just kind of the structure first and just kind of figure out how you want the outline of your house to look. Maybe you can even put a few trees or something that, uh, maybe some telephone poles out there just to give it, a, um, give it a sense that we are looking at a house or a building or an apartment complex. And then you can decide what your layout is going to be, uh, what your boxes and what your panels are going to look like. Um, so I can set a timer here for uh, five minutes, and we can we can start on that, and then we'll spend some time drawing each of the panels. Um, if you'd like to ask me any kind of questions about this, and uh, um, any questions about myself or, or this activity, you can do that and I'll try to answer a few of these. But I would say go ahead and get started. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, the comics and the drawings people are working on um, at the, uh, towards, towards the end of the session tonight. Okay. Um, Someone says, should we be working on a current house? No, you, you don't have to do that. I really feel like it can be a memory of a house, maybe a house you lived across the street from when you were a kid or something, um, or maybe you are a kid and you're just a, a weird house you saw somewhere. And I think it could really be anything. Uh, what if the house we're making is really big? Um, I think that's that's great. I would I would just try to fit it onto the paper um, that you're using and try to get the whole you know sort of uh, contour the outline of the of the um, of the structure onto your onto your paper and then you can put those panels in the middle. Someone asked me what kind of pen I'm using. Uh, it's a Pentel uh, uh, brush pen. It looks like this. I'll hold it a little closer. And you have to buy all the cartridges to, um, to stuff in there. And those cartridges look like this. I've always got a pile of these lying around. I'm trying to switch to just regular brush and ink and regular uh, uh, crow quills and things like that, but I'm, I'm still learning. Um, I'm just kind of taking a look here. Feel free to... Um, Oh, someone wants to know what breed uh, is our dog. Our dog is Pickles, and Pickles is about 35 pounds, and he is a brindle. Uh, he's all kinds of things, I think. He's um, uh, he's a pit bull, or he is a um, uh, terrier. It's hard to say. He's got a beard, so I'm not sure if that if that answers your question. Someone says, would a story about my future housework, like when I graduate with a degree and move into a new house? Yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that means that you're going to tell um, only, uh, you're going to be making up stories, which I think would be really exciting. Um, <laughs> someone asks, can, can you tell us more about your pet portraits? Yeah, maybe I will show, um, I can show an example of the of the pet portraits towards the end of the of the program, but basically, I that's kind of mostly what I what I work on. I um I I do about uh, two 
two to three pet portraits a week, I would say. And I also um, teach part-time and that's, that's generally how I spend my, my days. Um, and they're very, uh, they're very silly. So I'll, I'll show you an example of that later. Someone was saying, I would love to see someone's future dream house. Yes, yeah. The house I drew is the, is the house I live in. I, I, we've rented here for, for a number of years and um, I've, it's, it's sort of real, but it's also kind of a dream house because I'm including dreams I've had uh, in, in, this, in this drawing and I'm including real things and I'm including fake things. And so um, I encourage you to do a mixture of both real and fake stories in your comic. I kind of think that would be exciting. And it'd also be sort of fun to try and guess what's real and what's, what's sort of a myth. Uh, someone's saying they, they, uh, they're gonna draw their school and they like to freak themselves out and pretend it's haunted. I didn't even think about a haunted house, but that's, that's pretty great, yeah. Um, I think that's a, that's a great way to go about that. I teach uh, elementary school and, um, you know, like many teachers, I've been doing it all on Zoom and uh, I'm teaching five-year-olds and they're, they're really a, a bunch of the strangest five-year-olds I've ever taught. And um, for some reason, they always draw haunted houses and they, they try to come up with excuses to draw haunted houses regardless of what we're working on. And I can't quite figure it out. Um, but I would say every other art class or almost every art class, I will see a haunted house and it's starting to haunt me. Um, <clears throat> well, that, that was five minutes and it's okay. Uh, if you're still working on kind of the outline and the, um, uh, the layout of your, of your comic. Um, someone says, does four panels mean four squares? Yeah, it could be four squares, four rectangles. Uh, but my panels are all kinds of weird shapes. So yours can be any shape that you would like them to be to fit your story into. Um, so let me remove my pen just for a second. Okay, so if you want, you can hold your uh, you can hold your panels up to the camera just for the for the moment and just to give your your friends some encouragement. Oh, these are looking wonderful! Wow, this is great. This is great. That's awesome. Uh, and um, we can move on. And I'm I'm sorry if I'm moving uh, real fast, but I do want to get to the point where we can. Um, we can share our, our comics and some of, some of you can share your comics. And, uh, and afterwards, I hope, you'll, I hope you'll post it on social media and things like that. And I'll be able to, to see your, your completed comics later. Um, okay, so at this point, uh, let's, let's do a few minutes for each um, panel. Uh, so, okay, so I think that should put us, um, in, in with some good time. So let's let's maybe do five minutes for the first panel and we'll do the same thing for, for all the other panels. So you can go ahead and start on your first panel. And uh, I will also um, answer, I'll, I'll take a, I'll keep looking at the chat and I'll answer some questions if people wanna write in some questions. Um, and I'm also going to try to see if I can draw my comic, finish my comic while, while you are drawing as well. All right, I'll, I'll switch my uh, camera here. 
Okay, so for those of you that are just joining, uh, I've been working on kind of like a, a longer comic about um, the place where I live and I've got some true stories up here. I've got some kind of, uh, I'm kind of putting kind of like mythological figures all over my, my house and I'm imagining that they're sort of, uh, they're making the house the way it is and that they're kind of causing things to happen in the house. Um, and I'm telling uh, some, some true stories in this, in this four panel section here and also some, some fake stories, some imagined stories. Actually, the only, true story, the only true stories I know for sure are these two dog stories. Uh, the dogs that I know that have, that have lived in this house and that have uh, looked out the window of the house at the outside world. But I'm gonna start on my, uh, my imagined surfer character because I know that somebody that surfs lived here at one point. I don't know who they were I'm gonna have to uh, gonna have to at least imagine this person. I'll zoom in a little bit here. It's pretty quiet outside of my uh, um, house right now. I'm, I live right next to a park in West Philadelphia. And right before everyone signed on, there was a really crazy jazz band set, set up literally just like just outside of my house. And I thought that you were all going to be hearing some uh, crazy jazz drum solos and uh, um, some trumpet playing, which wouldn't really be bad. It just might make me uh, jumpy. Uh, but I think they've, I think they've maybe packed up for the night. So again, feel free to uh, ask questions or just you can make comments. Um, anything that's popping in your head as you're making these drawings. Something you're wondering about. Someone said, is it Clark Park? You are correct. It is Clark Park. My house is right next to Clark Park, the house where I rent. I think this character would be barefoot. Uh, practicing surfing in his in his house. So I'm gonna have to draw some toes. Okay, well, I, I've run out of time. Uh, let's move on to the next panel. Um, if you'd like, I'm, I'm going to keep moving along. So I uh, so we stay on time, um, but don't feel uh, that you have to rush and that you have to finish it during this session. So this is a this dog I'm drawing. Um, this is Katie. Katie lived on the uh, first floor apartment. We're up in the third floor, and Katie lived with her people, uh, Dion, and. Dion's partner, and this is no joke, Dion's partner's name is Katie. So Katie's uh, person 
was Katie. And I think that's the first time I've come across a, a dog and a and a and their person having the same name. If anyone has that same story, please please write in the chat. Because that would be that would be great. Katie's a very sweet dog. We miss Katie. She's still around. She just moved to another part of West Philly. Someone asked, how much digital creation versus physical do you do? Uh, love that some are hard to tell. Oh, um, yeah, most of my, pretty much everything I do is, um, is hand-drawn, um, but I, I, I do piece everything together in Photoshop. Um, I've yet to try out tablets and, uh, um, and, and things like that, but although I, I, I'm very eager to try them. Uh, I, I primarily draw all my comics on tracing paper, actually. So the comic that I, I did for The Believer, there's some, there's some comic pages. And uh, then I do all these layers with um, uh, pencil and with, um, with ink wash, and I, I scan them in and then I kind of choose um, what's going to be what color. Um, and it's kind of a crazy, it's kind of a crazy method. Uh, and you have, um, you definitely have pieces of tracing paper all over the, all over the place, but I've, I've grown to like it. And so, um, that's, that's just something I've, it's just my, my approach I've developed over the years. Someone's asking about teaching comics. Yeah, somebody here uh, teaches uh, middle school and high school art, wants to know how to teach comics. Um, since I've been teaching Zoom uh, this year, I've been almost exclusively teaching comics um, just because I can't get materials to my students. Um, and uh, I find that if we're all working on comics, it's, it's sort of easier to do. Um, well, it's just easier to run an art class and we can also build off of uh, uh, making comics, um, you can you can. It's it's more than just a one day activity, I guess is what I mean. Um, and I usually start by having the students spend time uh, drawing a character, and they'll draw the draw a character um, in different uh, poses. The really fun thing is having the character uh, with different facial expressions. Um, and uh, not sure. Uh, and then and then you can you can try um, using the character in stories, but also having the kids uh, do something called jam comics, which you can do on Zoom. Someone's pumping their fists on jam comics. Yeah, you can uh, you can um, just have someone draw a frame kind of like this and hold it up to the class and they can all be working on another drawing and then just call out the next student and they'll draw the next frame. Um, and you can go on like that. So I would, I would suggest moving on to the next frame now. And I, I, uh, I've done that a few times with my, uh, my first and second graders and my third and fourth graders and they really have a blast doing that. And in fact, they get a little too excited and they start um, kind of fighting each other over who is going to, um, who's going to do the next panel. And uh, it's a little intense. So, um, so if it, if it is successful, uh, be ready for some, some intense little storytellers.
It's great to see uh, so many uh, teachers on here. That's awesome. I hope everyone is, uh, has been doing okay, um, considering everything that's been going on. It's been a pretty hard year for students and for teachers and parents and well, everyone, but uh, most of my stress and anxiety has been focused on teaching. Anyone have recommendations uh, for inky pens that don't bleed? I actually am not uh, too knowledgeable about that. So if someone else has an idea, um, I'd be happy to, to read it out. Someone says Micron. Yeah, Microns are pretty good. I've used Microns on a number of surfaces. The pen I'm using right now is, is called a Faber-Castell. And uh, I have a tape on it because they, they dry up really quick. And so I, um, I always have a tape so I know which, which uh, there's my Micron. I always know which one is the newest one. And then if I'm making really, really sketchy stuff, then I can go to an older one and I can kind of just go to town on that, you know? Um, but I always have to, if I, have, I need a fresh one if I'm gonna make a fresh line, if that makes any sense. Um, all right, there's all kinds of uh, ink, ink discussions right now. That's a lot of fun to see. So Pickles has a nice brindle coat, which I'm not going to be able to really represent with this pen, but uh, he has kind of a white beard, which he's always had. Um, okay, I, I think it's about time to go on to the last panel, um, if if you if you're able to, and in a little bit I'm gonna ask um, for some volunteers to uh, to share, and I can't wait to see what you're working on. I think someone asked what my fake story was. The two true stories are the dog stories. So this is our dog Pickles. And the two fake stories are this surfer character because I, I saw some surfboards in the, in the shed. I put my bike in the shed and there's this pile of surfboards. And I imagine the owner of the house uh, has something to do with those surfboards. But I also just like to imagine that there was a, a surfer guy who can't really surf a lot throughout Philadelphia, but uh, even so he is enthusiastically trying out surfing inside. And then, so that's kind of based off of a real story. This is also based off of a real story. I'm imagining that there's someone cooking an obscene amount of broccoli because when we first moved in here, we would always, um, we would always have these, this crazy, uh, we would get knock, knocked out by the broccoli smell um, which I didn't really mind. It was just very strong. Uh, so I'm imagining that this person here is cooking lots of broccoli. And I'm also putting giant broccoli in the background here. Because for some reason, the broccoli, the, the smell was so strong that it might as well have been giant broccoli. The size of houseplants. Someone says it could be a surfer girl. Yeah, most certainly. Or it could be someone that bought surfboards but never got around to the ocean.
So those of you that are doing pen talk, uh, I, I, I personally like to um, do all of my fine lines first, like this. And then I like to switch to, to the brush pen and just kind of like to choose where the dark side is of everything. And so satisfying to just fill a bunch of black in with, uh, with a fresh brush pen, freshly filled brush pen. And then I usually go back with, um, with the thinner uh, micron or with the with the Faber Castell, and I'm a big fan of hatching. Uh, I don't like very clean hatching. I like really sloppy hatching. I kind of like really sloppy art artwork in general um, for myself. I, I really like other people's clean artwork, but uh, when I'm drawing, I, I only like it to be kind of sloppy and messy. Okay, I've still got some work to do here, but I'm going to take a break so I can take a look at how your artwork is looking. So let me remove my pen and let me switch my camera back. So I think um, if you want to, well, let's see, the believer just said, uh, you'd like to share, uh, make sure your camera's on and raise your hand and someone from the Believer will select you. And when you're selected, tell us your name and where you're joining from. Hello? Yes, hello. I'm unmuted. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Monique, and I'm in Manhattan right now. Um, I started with a ton with a Muji brush pen, and my Pentel brush pen is just too far away for my wire to go. But um, a new building was just constructed, like a block away from us, and it's the ugliest thing that we have ever seen. So we we don't actually know what it is. We actually I I did three lies and a truth to this. Uh, and it's just us imagining what's happening in this building. Um, this isn't one <laughs> of the panels, but uh, one side of the building has no windows whatsoever and it creeps us yeah. out. Um, and it just looks very like it's all concrete and uh, very smooth. So the first uh, true panel that I have here is um, Tetris blocks, cause it sort of looks like like right. Tetris blocks that had sort of just been like <laughs> huge concrete Tetris blocks that have been put together. Um, and yeah. this second much smaller panel is um, because of the no windows, this idea that maybe there's like some weird surveillance thing going on in here. And there are just <laughs> these guys in this little lair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my third panel is this very long thing. It's a, it's a board meeting of like a super villain with his like very large, <laughs> head uh, and like a little cocktail and charcuterie board tables at the base of it. Um, and the right. one truth where it's sort of like the ground level with me and my partner and like the, yeah. the surrounding buildings that like actually fit into the aesthetic of the neighborhood. It's yeah. both of us complaining that it looks like an unrendered building from a cheap video game. Yeah. There's no texture, <laughs> it's very ugly. So, um, but this was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, and that's great. That's, I, I really like all the humor and, and all the imagination you used on that. That's really fantastic. Uh, thank you. Please post that online. That's so good. Definitely. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, who, who else would like to, to share? Well, my name is Letty and I'm in Los Angeles right now. Hi there. And, hi, I drew my grandparents' house because it always I always seem to discover something new when I'm there. And oh, cool. my first panel, I drew the stairs, and I'm not really sure if there is an iron frog on the table, but I kind of think there is. So I drew an iron frog. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's great. And then for their kitchen, 
they always have good cereal. So, and I remember there was a gorilla on one of the cereal boxes. So I drew a, a cereal box with a gorilla, and there's always this jar of snacks. So I do that. Oh, fantastic! And uh, upstairs is my grandparents. My my grandparents' bed, and they have this really fancy bed frame. And uh, when I was little, I I used to like to sleep with them. And my grandparent, my grandpa, and my grandma, each have their own like night table, and it's kind of funny because my grandma's night table has like is so light because it has like this really fancy lamp and it has like all this stuff on it. And then my grandpa's my grandpa's night table has just like some pills and uh his glasses and then there's a tv remote on my grandma's night table because they always watch the news and <laughs> and uh here is my aunt's room and i drew these like butterfly wings in a cradle because uh she has these hanging butterflies in her in her room and she has a baby but i only drew one slot of it like the door because that room is always very very mysterious oh yeah and up here they have this little like porch thingy but you can't actually get out onto it but i always wanted to so i drew myself out on it and then oh great down here i forgot to do something but this is a picture of two dogs and uh, it's actually in their house. It's not actually here, but I always loved that picture. And then there's a grill because they have a grill. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the tiles on the, the, what's it called? Shingles on the roof are all right. different shapes because my grandfather likes to repair things. I don't actually know if he repaired the shingles, but... Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, that was that was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. I like that you were able to put yourself into the comic and you're able to uh, kind of go on an adventure within your own comic. That's so great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, who, who's who's next? Who would like to share next? Hello, I'm Colleen and I'm from Lethbridge, Alberta, and I live in an eight plex apartment building. I don't have great. great. Um, that was built in the 70s and uh, we have extreme weather here and a couple of years ago uh, the roof flooded and caused a waterfall <laughs> so I imagine oh, no. someone was up there sailing. Uh, we <laughs> also have <laughs> and I went kind of uh, crazy on it but we have these big old trees outside and the wind blows and they scratch the window and I call them the murder hand trees so I made a bunch oh. of those. <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. And then wow. Uh, in my apartment is my cat, Tulip, and she dreams about murdering the two blue jays that uh, frequent the front window. Uh, a previous tenant that lived below me uh, would get melancholy and he'd play his bass guitar and smoke a little. <laughs> <laughs> in Canada and um, right. you know, of course in every apartment there are the bicycle people who always seem to have a different bicycle doing different bicycle things uh, and upstairs tenant seems to have a barbecue which I don't think is allowed but has one but she's never used oh. it and she's been there for 10 years and that thing has never cooked anything so I imagined her <laughs> cooking a giant turkey and then we always have the plant lady so um <laughs> It's totally fun to imagine the people who live, you know, beside me and through the walls. You could do a whole graphic novel with that, with that, uh, <laughs> with with an apartment building in mind. That's that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I really like the pop of it. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank that. you that so was much. Great. I had a great time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, who's? Oh my goodness. Oh, These are friends of mine. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi Hi there. Hi. Hey, Steve. Thank you. Um, do you want to show yours? Can you say what your name is? Allie. Show your picture. Hey there. Hey, Ellie. Oh, wow. Can you tell me about it, Ellie? Um, this is one. Uh, I would, um, um, 
<laughs> Josie, do you want to show yours? You show yours, you don't have to talk about it. You show, show Steve your picture. Just show it. Ellie, I'm so, glad, I'm so glad you made that. Uh, yeah, Josie, what's this? Yeah. Oh, wow, this looks great. Can you hold it a little closer and maybe tell us about it? Wow. So, what do we have in the different uh, panels here? Come on, come on. Do you, do you want to talk about it? There, I think she's shy to talk about it, but it turned out really well. So yeah, thanks. absolutely. Look at all that. That's great. It's great. It's so great to see you. I can't wait to be able to visit with you again. Thank you, Steve. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Great to see you all. Who's next? Hi there. Uh, my name is Alyssa from New York. And uh, my comic is about one of those crazy New York stories. For about three years of my life, I lived in um, a five bedroom duplex, not alone, with four other roommates um, that occupied one half of a brownstone building. And for anybody who lives in New York, it's kind of like really hard to come by. Uh, but the owner, um, the owner had bought the building in the 1970s when Gramercy, the Gramercy neighborhood was really sketchy and then saw it kind of rise over its time. So this is a comic about some of the misadventures we had at, you know, in our building. Um, they're a little brownstone. So the first is uh, a door. Uh, that's what I remember, a cast iron door that is just really beautiful and uh, just really, really beautiful. Um, this is my neighbor's uh, house. She is the landlord. She's a vibrant 76, 77 year old woman who is sharp as tech and had her own um, collection of glassware that she made. She is an artist who exhibited at the MoMA before I was born. And she had these like little glass bowls that she still blew out. And she collected also these like broken wine glasses. So when I think of her um, and display them on her mantle. So when I think of her, I think of um, just having a collection of glasses that she never wore. Um, <laughs> In the main room, <laughs> in the living room, which is a huge communal space, we had we put together two dining room tables. So it looked kind of like a Last Supper Jesus table, <laughs> um, and um, even like featured in one of my uh, holiday cards one year. That's what it looked like. <laughs> And, um, and yeah, it's just something that I remembered. What's funny is that in this beautifully old expensive building, one time the ceiling uh, collapsed from water damage. So this is a uh, pro tip. Ceiling should not, <laughs> is not supposed to be on the floor. Um, <laughs> And then other misadventures, or uh, this was where my bedroom was situated one time, very New York story, a cockroach, and it looked, it felt like it was a hundred times the size, um, fell from the ceiling of my bedroom onto uh -huh. to my bed while I was in it, and a few kind of inches away from my face. Very, very, very scarring, but I'm alive to tell the tale. <laughs> and then finally, um, uh, with the pandemic, some people moved out. Uh, some people moved out uh, because they had to go home or, you know, so we had an extra room. And um, along with this, uh, one of the bedrooms became kind of an accidental pandemic, off, uh, pandemic office. It's a bed. Um, Here's a computer screen with a Zoom call saying you're muted. <laughs> and 
I think that for me, it was really meaningful to be able to have um, one of my close friends who needed to get away from his kids just come and work at the office, uh, our fake office. And I think that as someone who uh, I think of my childhood home, I think of my um, immigrant parents uh, keeping their four kids in one bedroom. <laughs> All four of us in one bedroom for for two years and so it felt uh like a really wonderful for lack of a better word homecoming and have a uh, space for my friends as you were because that was something that i would have loved as a child so thank you all for indulging me that's it hi my name is Park, and i drew my house and there's like some made up things here and then some real things. So me and my friends recently made up a conspiracy that there are like mailboxes controlling our lives. So here's the <laughs> mailbox snuck into our house and he's on the computer. That's and then fantastic. over here, sometimes like I hear people saying things, but when I ask them this, if they said that, they say no. So that's my imagination of like the creature that copies voices. <laughs> and this is a dream I had. I was trying to cook flatbread, but it started sizzling and then the house caught on fire. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and then this happened today. So my sister was under her blanket port and then our yes. cat Lily walked right over the blankets Oh, right. No respect. Right over the blanket for it. <laughs> wow. Well, that's great. I like you've got a great mixture of um, of uh, imagination and, and true stories in there. And uh, and thank you to the to the person that came just before you. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you very well, but I could I could see the comic and uh, and thank you for all those stories. Um, that's great. Thank you so much. Oh, I, I think we have room for uh, two more. Okay, hi. Hi there. Um, hi, I'm Izzy. Um, so um, I live in Staten Island and it's um, kind of just notorious for being like dunked on and like everywhere in New York, <laughs> but like I, I get it. Um, so I made everything like made up because I, um, I wanted to and I, I thought it was a lot more fun. Um, so this is the lady that I think, or I've joked about lives in our attic and my partner hates that joke, but like, I feel like she's really nice and she keeps all the Christmas ornaments like nice. So I just think about her. Um, and there was a moment where I felt like all my lotion was being used or like my beauty products. So I felt like she was just using it. So I just think about this lady ghost like living there. Um, <laughs> and then this is like, uh, just like where I keep my um, my glasses and cups and stuff. Uh, and I'm like really afraid of bugs, but I know they're all in this house. So I just try to imagine them like having a good time, like living in the glassware and like not hurting anyone. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. This is, well, actually this is real. This is my cat Nibbler and she's like the queen <laughs> of the house. So like that's, that's real. Um, oh, yeah. And then this is, um, this is, yeah, this is the basement, man. Um, I hate doing the laundry or going down to the basement at night. Cause I just like, it's so big. Um, and the light it, it's only by the stairs. So like, I, you don't really see far beyond. So like, I swear that there's someone down there, but then I mm -hmm. also, again, to assuage my fears, just imagine him like taking care of the laundry when we're not there. Um, yeah. and then like we have the backyard is like so gross. Um, mm -hmm. So that like, I'm imagining like all these, um, because it's been raining and stuff, just like a lot of like 
mushrooms and oyster mushrooms and regular mushrooms and like little people taking care of it and like kind of shopping maybe they like go shopping with them um and then I was thinking of when I so I'm Filipino and when I grew up in the Philippines my mom told me about the duende um which are like little people and like if you she said like if you like took care of them or like you fed them food or gave them milk or something, um, they would in kind like take care of your house. And so like, since I haven't been like leaving food out for them, um, this is just, this one's like sleeping and chilling and hanging out. But um, this is like my made up house. And the only thing that's real is the cat, my cat queen. That's it. Oh, that's, that was so great. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I like to see a little bit of uh, your heritage and, and also uh, the Nosferatu. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that's fantastic. Nice. Yeah, thank you so much. This is great. I guess, yeah, thank you. And this is this is our last um, uh, comic that we'll look at. And then uh, I'll, I'll say some closing words. Hello. Hi. Um, I didn't hear you in California right now. Um, but I, okay, and my comic doesn't exactly have that much rhyme or reason to it. It's just a house that I kind of made up and then just a dream that I had, but um, here it is. I'm on digital, oh. so there might be a bit yeah. of fire. Oh, that's but, great. No, we can see it great. Uh, and you can, if you can hold it a little closer, if that's possible. There you go. Yeah, but, um, if you, I'm sorry, if you could raise it up just a little. There, is that good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just a random dream I had where I found uh, like this star ornament in my attic or something that could like fly, but it was an entire dream. So I, it's kind of random, I'll be honest. And there's not much to talk about, but um, yeah. That's that's fantastic. I really like how you framed it too. I love the uh, decorative corners, and uh, I I wish I could take classes from you on, on how to do this digital art because I I got to know how to do it. That looks really exciting. <laughs> this looks so. Good. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, wow, that was that was so great. And uh, and the believer has posted um, in the chat there. You can see. Uh, you can hashtag Friday Night Comics uh, with any post you make, and feel free to add me. Um, I'm at at Steve Tier. Uh, that's my that's my Instagram, and you can find me. Uh, my website is stevetierillustration.com, and you can feel free to uh, hit me up on on Instagram or um, send me a note. Or and uh, I, I can't wait to see. Uh, your, your completed comics and maybe more comics that you do in the past, uh, I'm sorry, in the future, uh, in, this, in this format, in this style. Uh, and as promised, uh, I said I would hold up a, uh, a pet portrait uh, that I do. And so there you go. I make these little postcards of some of the past pet portraits I've done. And so, um, yeah, so uh, that's, that's, a whole, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, but, um, but, but that allows me to do comics is, uh, being able to make uh, pet portraits for people. And so when I'm not doing pet portraits, I, I get to, I get to work on comics. Um, so, but thanks so much. This was, this was a blast and I, and I, I really had no idea how this was going to go. And I really, um, I'm just, I'm just moved by, uh, by your stories and, um, and, and also just kind of like how you react to, homes and houses and structures and buildings. And I think that's really great. Uh, so thanks so much. And, thank you, Steve. Um, Let's give Steve a hand, y'all. Thanks so much, thank everyone. Have so a great much. night. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.